as, as a former president of uh, NTUFS, do you have any advice for the Muslim students in NTU? First priority, do well in your studies. I was told when I was in NTI, I met this uh, one of the lecturers that, that came. He said that, and it's still stuck in my mind. He said, if you are a Muslim, then you have no reason to fail. Because you believe God is on your side. How can you fail? Not only must you succeed, you must excel. You must not be number two, number three, you must be number one. So if you apply yourself, and among ourselves, we get first class honors. We, we excel in our studies. And at the same time, not only for ourselves, we help our friends to, 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 to excel with us. I, I think that must be the first priority. Mm -hmm. Secondly, within our ability, within the time that we have, embrace our fellow Muslim brothers in all forms. Uh, that they are. There will be women who don't wear their tudong, don't, who don't even cover their legs or whatever it is. Embrace them as loving brothers and sisters. And thirdly, project that love Islam is supposed to have in our heart, that we, that we invite at every prayer that we do to be felt by everybody. Not just ourselves, among ourselves, mm -hmm. but to everybody else. Because at the end of the day, Islam is whatever they feel we bring to them. If you are so reclusive, like what I did in the past, uh, Islam will never be out. We do not interact with our friends, we do not be with them, we do not eat with them. They don't even feel we are human. They don't even feel that we are like them. We must be able to infect them with the good that they see in us, with the deeds that they see in us, so that when they see the bad elsewhere, they say, no, that's not Islam. I know Hedir, he doesn't behave that way. He is the Muslim that I, I trust and I believe. And I think we have to do this one at a time. Okay, every year, uh, every year we have a lot of uh, graduates. And Usually the companies that we go, we tend to be the minority in the company, sometimes being the only Malay Muslim yes. or the only Muslim. So how do we learn, as in, do you have any advice for us? So how do we integrate with the others without uh, compromising our Islamic values? Well, I think you don't have, you never have to compromise your Islamic values. But it's what you think Islamic value is that you <laughs> That because you think that is Islamic value, you think you are compromising it. I'll give you an example. Uh, people tell me sometimes it's so difficult to pray. Right? You, you have to hide somewhere, you have to take time off sometime and you, 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 you. It's so difficult. It's not like in Saudi, you know, where when you hear the prayer, everyone stops working and then you can pray together. There's even a musalla and you can take your time and you finish up and you can go to work again. But if you really examine that situation, do you think Allah, our God, love those people who have easy time to do their prayers more than people like ourselves who struggle to do our prayers? So why does it matter? <laughs> why, why do you call that? giving up our values. In fact, that is our value. The ability for us to find space and time to do our prayers despite the difficulties of adjusting around a situation which is just not conducive for us to do what we would normally do easily. So I think it's a paradigm that you have to go with and be yourself and not uh, make it look like just because it's difficult say, to pray and this is uh, compromising my, my, my ability to be Muslims. So I think it's important for, for Muslims, in whatever situation they are in, to know how to adjust, at the same time to make, them, to make what you represent not confronting, uh, confrontational to, to the value that people have initially, and over time be respected for the profession, professionalism that you bring more than the race or the color or whatever you are. 
after some time, when you are successful, like as I see in my career, people are colorblind already. Your boss doesn't see you as a Malay, your boss doesn't see you as a Muslim. And he, he doesn't care because at the end of the day, he knows you, he trusts you, he will give you the most difficult task, and even when you make a mistake, he will forgive you. Uh, you know, there was once I was I was traveling in Pakistan in my number two man in, in Sigtel. And uh, we were in a lounge waiting for the plane to, 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 to fly off. And then it was time for prayers. And you know, you can either pray in the mall, in, in a plane, or, and I thought I have time and there's a musala somewhere, right? And I, went, I can pray. And you know, I told, when I told, asked the attendant in the, in the lounge, uh, I want to do my prayers. You know what he did? He took the sajada in front of my boss and prayed here. <laughs> so imagine you have to pray in front of your boss. Because your boss does not see this as a big issue with you because he knows you as a person. Whether I pray in front of him or not, he really doesn't bother. He does not suddenly become an affront to him. What the hell are you doing? You know, praying like this in front. Can't you wait? Can't you do can you do something else? But because he values your contribution, it does not matter. So you have to get to that point over time and be patient. When you enter any profession, any company, to win their trust. So at the end of the day, this you a fellow human being, a fellow person, people who may have different practices, but because you are their friend, they are willing to, they are willing to compromise with you. They are willing to adjust for you. Don't be in a hurry. Going back to the PIMS, do you have any special or fond memories you had during your presidency? Well, I think the most important thing is the experience of putting it together. Uh, you know, you have to submit forms, you have to go to interviews, you have to uh, put up a constitution and, and all the things, uh, a learning process for me, uh, which I applied in many times, many times over again and again when I organize many things. I, I'm always organizing things, you know. Even here, I'm organizing things and uh, rallying people to a cause, no matter how small. Uh, it's a good practice. You start when you're a student, and later on, when you go to work in life, you also have to start. You have to learn to organize people too, uh, as a supervisor and, and, and so forth. So, I I I I hope uh, as uh, students, you use that opportunity where the experience and the things that you do. Uh, as a student, uh, even when you make mistakes, nobody will die. Nobody will be will be injured. Nobody will be hurt because you are students. Because it's just a student body, so it's okay to make mistakes. Learn from the mistakes. Reflect as you grow older. Say, why did I do that? You know, and uh, forgive yourself because you're going to do better or learn from the mistake. So I hope that uh, students come together and and just do what you think is right. Don't worry about whether it is right or wrong, because you are students. You are still young. You are going to go through a journey. Uh, you will reflect later on, uh, and you could have done better. That is fine. Uh, in your opinion, uh, what do you think a Muslim leader should have? What qualities of a Muslim only leader? Only two: Kuwa and amana. Because if you have only amana, trustworthiness, integrity then you don't know how to do things, then you have an incompetent organization. If you only have competency and no integrity, then you become corrupt. You do it only for yourself, you only do it for, for the purposes that you, you try to achieve for worthy purposes. But if you have both, you have to look for both of these, uh, these, uh, these, these values in your leaders. You find these two values in their leaders. No matter how unpopular he would be, he will run a good organization. Okay, uh, what are your hopes for the future of I Firstly, I, I hope, like, like I said just now, that it learns first to provide for the welfare, for the mutual welfare of its members, uh, and, and get the, the members to focus on uh, achieving the best in their studies. Mm -hmm. Secondly, to learn to uh, infect the goodness of Islam among the members. To learn to practice uh, 
goodwill, welfare, rahma, but the state of Bishan. And then to be able to transport these values and make it felt to people beyond you. I think if you can achieve these three levels of uh, activities, then you will achieve these three things, either individually or, or, or together. I think you, have done, you would have done a great thing. Okay, what would you like to say to the current batch of uh, MTUMS students as well as the graduates? Since you've already said it. come, <laughs> <laughs> said it yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think I'd just like to ask, like, um, how, how would you suggest to bring back all old members to contribute or maybe You know, speak? today you have, we have no excuse not to know who they are. And you knew who I, who I am, and they send me letters, they send me all sorts of uh, what you call it, invitations to, to join them and so forth. So you have to think around what is the purpose of bringing that back together. And uh, if it's about funds, it's about, if it's about uh, uh, essays about funds, you, you must then make sure that the money they give is going to be something worthy. People don't give money for free, even though they are very rich. They, they give it because it is worthy. If you have a, a purposeful program uh, and you can present this in a very cogent way, and then you use the internet, you use the emails to basically send to these people, then you have to also canvas these people and uh, to get them to start to contribute. Now, you may not go all the way back to 29 years ago, but you certainly can start working with those three or four years ago who, who are still fresh in their memory. And then you start to build on that. And then the rest come in and they can. Yeah. <laughs> do you I think you, um, what advice do you have to, I mean, maybe do you possibly foresee anything? Because as in like trying to bring back seniors to contribute, right, it's yeah. hard. Oh. I mean, <laughs> sometimes it's not very easy. Because sometimes the question comes like they are working and things like that. So. Look, it takes time first for them to know who you are and where you're coming from. To trust that, yes, there's something I can do. Secondly, you, you need to learn the program uh, to be able to communicate why this will benefit society or them. Uh, many of us are already contributing, so you don't need to text them further. But there are still so many who are not. Uh, and I'm sure they have enough guilt to part with their time, money or effort to, to say, yes, I have done something for you. So you, you do have to write to them. Now, I, I do get some emails from you guys wanting to do, go here, go there, do this, do that. <laughs> you know, it's just hodgepodge. And uh, so first question is when will this stop coming? The second question is where is the money going? And uh, after we give you the money, for example, do you actually tell me what you have done with the money? And who benefited with the money? You don't do that. You take the money and you say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right. So there are many things you can do to improve your your the way you do things. So I left school so many years ago, no, more than almost 30 years ago, and I have accumulated enough experience running companies, running international organizations, to impart, to share with you things that you can do better as an organization. And and then for well, there, there are really a lot of synergies that you can get. Even a few of them to come and say, let's do this together, including the fact of uh, how to prevent any particular uh, group from uh, dominating and uh, steering you in a particular way. Because there must be a, a, a universal value system, Islamic value system, that we must not steer away from. It. So it will straight away uh, ring you know, in, your, in your mind that this is something wrong here. For example, they make you hate particular groups. Mm -hmm. They make you feel uh, very exclusive. That you are right, everybody else is wrong. All these things which should ring bells if you say, look, this group is something wrong with them. 